What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to the channel. I've been getting lots of questions from brand new PS4 players in Dungeon Defenders Awaken about farming the best possible loot and weapons. So armor and weapons and what do you farm and where do you farm them in endgame in DDA? Now, one thing that is important to note is the entire endgame loot system that is currently in the game is going to be getting reworked in the future based off of player feedback. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I will put a link to a very informative uh, forum post from Chromatic down in the description below. However, let's hop on in and take a look at the maps. Now, first off, when it comes to farming weapons, special weapons in the game do not drop until you get to Massacre Mode. In Massacre Mode, the special weapons are all about the boss weapons. So you've got the Demon Lord in Alk Labs. You've got the Goblin Mech in Throne Room. You've got the Ancient Dragon in the Summit. And you've got the Lycan King in the Keep. This is where the best weapons in the game will drop. Now, as you ramp up to a higher difficulty boss, you're getting a higher quality weapon with one exception. The weapon for Throne Room is heavily uh, gated or set to be for ability heroes. So if you're, say, a Huntress that wants to really have a powerful, powerful Flaming Phoenix, then the Throne Room will be a great weapon for you to start off with. Uh, the best starter weapons all together, of course, are from the Demon Lord and Alk Labs as you break into the tier. And then the best end game weapons are going to be from the Keep. Now, the difference between the weapons between the Summit and the Keep are very, very small. So you might find you like the Summit weapon more. If that's the case, remember, it's all about the roll you get. If you get a super high quality Summit weapon, it is going to be better than a lower quality Lycan King weapon. So weapons in the game are all about massacre mode. Now, what do you do until you get to massacre mode? Well, you use the weapon that you like the best. Uh, ideally, if you do a map, any map on rifted mode, you're going to be guaranteed a fusion weapon. Uh, the benefit from fusion weapons is they do double damage to any rifted enemies. More importantly, they every boss in the game is a rifted enemy, so they're going to do double damage to every boss. So definitely a nice thing to have as you progress through the game and get to Massacre is a fusion weapon from any rifted map. Now, which weapon you use, it's up to you. Just use whatever you like the best, whatever shot type feels nice. That is really the go-to for you until you get to Massacre mode. Now, once you are in Massacre, and well, I mean, this applies to every tier, but assuming you waited to start Rifted Mode in Massacre, other than just snagging a weapon, all armor is going to be targeted farming, so specific loot in the game. How the fusion armor works is each armor set will affect a particular defense. So, for example, an ancient set is going to turn the very first defense into a fusion tower. Guard sets are going to turn the second defense into a fusion tower. Militia sets will do the third defense. Minor will be the fourth. And then primitive will be the fifth defense. Now, what defense is this? Well, they're in order right in a row. So, for example, on like the Monk, my first defense, of course, is the Ensnare Aura. My second defense would be the Electric Aura. Third would be the Healing Aura. Fourth would be the Strength Drain. And fifth would be the Enrage Aura. So they're right in order there. Now, where you farm these sets of gear is all targeted drops. They're going to drop 100% of the time. If you go to survival mode, and this is the current drop location, so you can screenshot this image right up above. Now, you will note these drops do drop in campaign as well. However, in campaign, it is not a guaranteed drop, and it's coming from a pool. So you can't really target farm in campaign or fusion sets. Uh, what my suggestion would be is what I personally did. And I what I did was I got to massacre mode first. Once I got to Massacre Mode, I cleared the first two maps of the campaign. So I did 
the deeper well and I did ancient mines on regular non-rifted non-hardcore then I swapped over to survival and did a full ancient mines survival run on massacre this is going to give you a powerful uh, huge bit of upgrades and gear plus it's going to give you some nice experience levels that makes it super easy to just blast through the rest of the campaign maps now with that in mind, I did do the rest of the campaign maps on Rifted. Now, by going through and doing the campaign maps on Rifted, you can then take a look at what fusion gear you have once you're done with the campaign, and then head back over to Survival and start target farming all of that loot. Now, as I mentioned, this system will be changing. Uh, in the current state of the game, that is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to get to Massacre mode, you're going to want to get Rifted Farming going. Now, you can start Rifted Mode at any time. I personally started in Massacre just because I wanted to get to the highest difficulty the fastest way possible. So I skipped Rifted Mode all the way until Massacre difficulty. And then that is where the grind really takes place. We jokingly refer to getting Massacre and Rifted unlocked and start doing that as the end of the tutorial the end of the tutorial and the start of the game now obviously that's just a joke but most of your grind time or most of your play time will take place in massacre rifted mode as you're going through and trying to find the perfect stuff now as many know builder pets are not what they used to be so what is a builder pet well there is no builder pets anymore what happened to giraffes in the mistamine rock pad is you see the stat versatility was added what versatility is is your old builder bonus if those of you that played dungeon defenders one know that the character that you were playing the map active on if that particular hero built defenses it would get a builder bonus and those defenses would hit harder the builder bonus in dungeon defenders awaken is called versatility and it refers to all heroes in your deck. So by default, you've got 20% versatility, meaning every single hero in your deck gets a 20% bonus to the output of the towers that they place. Now, if you remove that hero from the deck, of course you lose that versatility bonus. Now, if you were on your active hero, uh, the giraffe on a treadmill only affects your active hero but if you're using a giraffe on your active hero, you will get an additional 5% versatility from that giraffe pet. So uh, that is what the current state of builder pets are right now. Uh, basically, a giraffe on a treadmill is just a hero DPS stat stick. You see, by using this one, I'm getting an additional 2800 vitality, 2700 attack, 2700 ability on my monk which is pretty darn considerable when you look at the overall stats they have so it is a massive stat stick for your active hero and boosts the defenses of the heroes in the deck now if you are on a raw dps hero say like the rogue for example it's going to be in your best interest to get yourself a propeller cat a propeller cat is going to just be a straight up damage increase Take a look at it, 159.84% boost damage. This is going to drop from survival on the alchemical labs. So get to alk labs, get yourself a prop cat. It is a huge boost in damage output. Now, if you are playing a booster type hero, uh, specifically the warden or the squire. Now, this does affect other heroes as well but it's more significant on the Warden and the Squire. So I only suggest using the Warden and the Squire for an actual damaging pet. Uh, you get the Monkey King, you want a Fused Monkey King from Endless Spires. That is the highest single target damage pet in the game. Now remember, fusion pets are just like fusion weapons. By them being fused, that means they're doing double damage to rifted enemies which also includes bosses. You can get a fusion pet on any of the uh, bonus maps, meaning the Magus Quarters, Endless Spires, Glitter Helm, and Foundries and Forges, 
if you play them on Rifted Mode. So play these maps on Rifted Mode will get you a Fusion Pet. The best Fusion Pet to get, of course, being the Endless Spires and the Monkey King, as will be the most overall single target DPS that you can get out of any pet in the game. So hopefully this helps answer some questions on weapons and armor drops and what you should do to farm them. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions down in the comments below. And once again, remember, these systems are going to be changing. Uh, there was a lot of surveys done over the previous months and players were polled on what they liked and didn't like in the game. One of the things that is set up for a change in the future is Rifted Mode and Fusion Gear in how the entire endgame loot system works. But thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.